Okay, ni stun ni kok ka kes si skak ni tiganak. I am Ramona Bighead. I I come from the Kainai people, which are part of the Blackfoot people in um, southern Alberta, into Montana, and uh, I am currently the principal of Kainai High School in my home community of the Blood Reserve. Gaki o kitem skata no wao, Mr. Haya ni tsiga son papa se so sinia. Hi there, my name is Dwayne Donald. Um, I'm from the Papa Chase Cree and my home is in Edmonton. Um, I'm currently an associate professor in the Faculty of Education at the University of Alberta. And uh, we're happy to be here as part of the IAI and University of Calgary gathering here at the Banff Centre. We've been asked to uh, give our views and our thoughts on why we think this work is important. And just in the last couple of days that I've had the opportunity to spend with the delegates who, who've taken part in this, um, this program, um, I've come to realize that as Indigenous peoples, um, there's, there's so many commonalities in terms of our connection to place. And uh, I've had opportunities to talk with people and to share and to listen to some of their uh, viewpoints and experiences and, and from uh, members from um, all, all the various countries within South America. And uh, I think for, for me and for my, uh, my, from my experiences and from my community as an educator for the past 20 years, uh, I see the value in taking our students outside of the, the traditional uh, confines of a classroom and taking them outside onto the land so that they can learn, first of all, give them an understanding that our traditional territories were vast, our people understood um, who we were in relation to the land, we had, we had vast amounts of knowledge of the ecology and uh, the science, if you will, of, of this land. Our people knew where to hunt. Our people knew where to, which rivers were the ones to, to cross. And we also knew that there was a healthy respect for boundaries, traditional boundaries from other uh, indigenous nations surrounding us. And um, so I think for us, we, by taking our students out, we're able to, to try to erase some of those um, colonial or colon, colonized um, mentalities that were imposed upon our people through, through colonization, through putting us on uh, the reserves in Canada, through putting us all in Indian residential schools. We've had to unlearn some of that stuff. And part of that process of unlearning is being able to go outside into the land and learning th with our elders, um, learning our language, and going back to who we are in terms of ceremony, songs, um, and just getting a really good idea of the, the history. Um, I know Leroy Little Bear, Dr. Leroy Little Bear, a, a renowned Blackfoot scholar, often says if if this is your land, where are your stories? And he, he concludes that by saying, we have them, we know who we are, and we know uh, we do have the stories and songs and ceremonies with all the places within our traditional Blackfoot territory. So the work that, that uh, this organization is doing is uh, bringing that to light, helping us to build those relationships so that we can come to work together and hopefully be able to to use those, that common strength and resilience that we have to be able to educate um, each other and, but most importantly, to educate our children and our grandchildren so that they'll walk around with the pride knowing as the Indigenous people of this land, um, we can garner strength from that and be able to overcome some of the, some of the, the, the stuff that we've had to overcome due to colonization. So I think um, it's really important that we, we continue these dialogues. It's important that we continue to listen to one another so we have a better understanding of who we are. Um, but most importantly, I think for me, is just the fact that I, um, I am listening today. And I'm gonna sh end off with a story that my dad told me 
my grandfather was dying in a hospital and I went with my dad to go visit him. And when we left the room, I looked at my dad and I said, our, our gra my grandfather's dying. And my dad said, yeah, he is. And I panicked because I thought, he's going to die with all this knowledge, all the ceremonies, all the songs, everything. This old man is going to die with that. And so I turned to my dad and I, I told him, but dad, I didn't listen. And my dad put his arms around my shoulder and he just said, don't worry, I did. So today, I'm listening. There's going to come a day when my children and my grandchildren are going to be ready to listen. And when that day comes, I'm ready to tell them the things that today I'm currently paying attention to. Yeah, what she said. <laughs> um, well, for me, I, I would say the focus of my work and, and uh, the focus of how I participate in conversations like this has to do with uh, the kind of human being we have in mind because I I understand the processes of colonialism and, and education really in general as, as promoting the development of a particular kind of human being which means of course that people who aren't like that have been violently excluded and uh, assimilated and so I'm interested in a project where where we can get some balance back and, and so I'm interested in in the idea of you know what kind of human being do we have in mind and how how can we connect that project to local understandings of wisdom wherever they kind of manifest themselves so you know if I understand colonialism as an extended process of denying relationships I can say that the educational project as part of that has been learning to divide <coughs> the world learning to divide the world in very particular ways and um, there's been lots of consequences for that and so I'm interested in any kind of project that allows people to be human beings together. And what I mean by that is, of course, is that we bring our whole selves. We understand ourselves as different. We recognize that we have different stories and different histories and even different values and traditions. But we don't see that as problematic. We're not fearful of that. We try to focus on what unifies us. And in this case, of course, what unifies us is that um, ecologies need uh, we need a closer relationship with them again because in my view there's many things that have been known around the world that have been forgotten uh, on this sort of trajectory that we've been on in a techno scientific way and so uh, how can we ground ourselves in the local how can we attend to local ecologies and use those to guide us in in what we think we need to do next and uh, so I very much connect the problem of climate change to the problem of what kind of human being do we have in mind and if we start with that and we attend to that in our relationships to what gives us life then uh, that's where my hope for my grandchildren and my great grandchildren so down on, on the line that's where it comes from is uh, is that kind of balance in relationships so any project that involves people sitting down and talking to each other in respectful ways and thinking in those ecological and those wisdom relational ways is, is something that I want to support. So, can I can I ask something? Hi hi.